Hi, I'm Charlie with Precision Matthews, and since we already have our PM1130V set up from last video, I thought we might talk about a topic that comes up often enough to warrant discussion, change gears. If your carriage is set up to move at a certain rate, you'd like to change that rate, and you have a quick change gearbox on your lathe, it's as simple as consulting the chart on the front of your lathe, flipping some levers, and off you go. But many smaller machines, including our PM1130V, don't have quick change gearboxes, so you'll be dealing with change gears. That's no more complicated than using a quick change gearbox, in some ways less so, but there are some considerations and best practices that I wanted to talk about. So let's get started. For this example, we're going to pretend that we have completed a turning operation and we're moving to a threading operation. We were doing this imaginary turning operation at this feed rate. We chose this for the video for no other reason than that was the feed rate the lathe was already set to. Let's say we need to thread at 16 TPI. We would find that on the chart here and see that we need to set up the change gears in this combination, along with setting the gearbox lever to the A position. We would use this same combination of gears for 8 and 32 TPI by just changing that lever position. We'll start by making sure the lathe is powered off. There is a safety switch that kills power when the side cover is removed, but I like redundant layers of safety when it's something that determines how many fingers I have at the end of my life. I'm shooting for 10, and I'm on track so far. Off comes the cover, and we're ready to swap those gears out. Next is pretty straightforward. We'll just loosen the pinch bolt that secures the banjo, and swing that banjo forward to access the change gears. The two upper pairs of change gears are on axles that unscrew with an 8mm open end wrench. There's a T-nut on the back and a thin washer between the inner gear and the banjo, and you won't drop either on the ground if you're a better person than me. The third gear down directly turns the gearbox input shaft, and it's just secured with a 5mm socket head cap screw and a C-washer. Remove those, and then you can work the gear off of that input shaft. To get the pairs of gears separated from their keyed bushing, please don't use any kind of prying tool. The bushings are made to shear and be the sacrificial part if the lathe is crashed, but that makes them kind of brittle, and they can be damaged by prying. These bushings are a close fit with the gears, so some wiggling is in order if you're taking them out by hand. You can certainly do that, but I think there's an easier way. You can use a bench block, or in this case, a spare piece of steel tubing, along with an appropriately sized punch from a transfer punch set. You want one that's just a little smaller than the hole in the gears, but still gets good contact with the bushing then some light taps, and it pops right out. If you're at all familiar with this channel, this won't be the first time you'll hear me say, installation is the opposite of removal, and it won't be the last. I have some light grease that I added because we cleaned the gears off for the camera, but often there's enough lubrication on the gears that you don't need this every time. You press the bushing in by hand, tap it flush with your dead blow hammer, and these gears are ready to go on the lathe. Make sure you put the parts back together in the order they came off, or you'll run into clearance issues somewhere. The order is gear axle, thick washer, then the gears, thin washer, then the whole assembly goes on the banjo, and the T-nut goes in the back. From here, you're ready to install these gears on the banjo. It's hard to mess this part up. The assembly you just put together goes in the slot in the banjo, the T-nut slides into the back, and you put everything finger tight. We only went finger tight because we still need to set the gear mesh. We don't need to be super precise, but too tight or too loose can result in more noise than is strictly necessary. Four thou of clearance is what we're aiming for, so you can use the post-it note trick that we've covered in our power feed installation video. After a couple of times swapping out the gears, you'll get a feel for it and won't need the post-it note as a guide. When you tighten the gear axles down, 
I'll mention that you don't have to put the big fist on it. It's not lug nuts on your car. We don't have a torque spec for this, but just about snug is what we go for. With that, we're ready to swing the banjo back in place and tighten that pinch bolt. You can use the post-it note again if you want to set the mesh on the top gear, but like I said, you'll get a feel for it in short order. As you're putting the side cover back on, make sure this fork goes back into the safety switch to allow the lathe to run again. I get about 20 calls a year from people saying, I swapped the change gears on my lathe and all of a sudden it won't run. But now that you've seen this video, you won't be one of those calls. So there you have it. With practice, swapping out your change gears takes only a few minutes, so you can change feed rates or go between turning and threading as often as you need. As always, if you have questions, post them below so we can answer them for everyone, or drop us an email or call and we'll help you with any issues you might be having. As always, thanks for watching.